Good afternoon and welcome to the Land of Conflicts. I'm Gabriel McCoy and today we'll be jumping into the tension of the Middle East, discussing what people really feel about the divide between Palestine and Israel. We've got two special guests in the studio with us today. We've also got some opinions from the public. So please sit tight and keep your mind open while we explore the Land of Conflicts. As hopefully most of you are aware, tensions are high in the Middle East, as there's great debate over the land between Israel and Palestine. Today with me, I've got David Stone, who is a professor of epidemiology and public health. He is well informed on the conflicts and has experienced speaking about them in several locations. He is with us representing the Israeli side of our debate. Also with us, we've got Tarek Hamis, who is a member of the Palestinian Society in London and will be representing the Palestinian side. And with that, let's get into our questions. First question I'd like to raise to both of you. Does Israel fight for peace, or is this the consequences of attacks by Hamas over the years? David, do you like to kick us off? I think the first thing to say about peace is that its absence is a totally avoidable tragedy and has been since the outbreak of this conflict almost 100 years ago. In the course of that 100 years, Nearly 100,000 people have lost their lives. Many more than that have been severely injured on both sides. The great tragedy is not just in these, fig these stark figures in themselves, but all of it was entirely avoidable. Why do I say that? What we have here are two peoples who have been in conflict over one tiny strip of land. The only reasonable solution to that conflict is to share it. And what has happened throughout the course of these decades is that one side to the conflict, the Jewish side, has agreed to share that land, and the other side, the Arab side, because this is an Israeli-Arab conflict, not just an Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the other side has refused to share it, has refused to contemplate Jewish sovereignty in any part of Palestine. As a result of that, we have seen over many, many decades completely avoidable bloodshed right up until the present day. And I presume you were referring to the recent violence on the border between Israel and Gaza when you mm -hmm. referred to yes, Gaza. Uh, yeah. Tarek? Yes, I think um, when we talk about peace, everybody wants peace, but you cannot have peace without justice. Um, I think we all know about the apartheid South Africa regime and it wasn't until, until something was done and the impasse in, in South Africa that the, the black majority could actually see that there was some road to having justice. Now the problem is Israel often puts, puts out the, the idea that this, this is just a conflict between two people as if it's been happening for ages. Well, 70 years is a long, long time and we'd go back before that when the British mandate was there. But it's not something that's been happening for centuries. The Palestinians were living for centuries, and many of them will be no doubt have been descendants from 2,000 years ago. There were Jews living in, in, uh, in Palestine before the British mandate, totally in peace with, with the, the Palestinian Arabs. There was no conflict at all. This is not an, a conflict which has risen out of, out of a history of, of, of centuries of, of, of uh, struggle. It's a conflict that has, has started because one side took a, a, a nationalist colonial settler ideology based on the idea of separate development. Uh, is it really unfortunate that that, uh, that that philosophy actually started? It is a similar philosophy to the apartheid one. The idea that you cannot live in peace with other people, that you cannot have a, a, a non-racist, anti-racist society in, in, in the world without having your own state. 
and developing a state in someone else's land, which is what happened in Palestine. Palestine was not an empty land, which is often cited by Israelis, uh, and that the Palestinians did not exist, that the 400 villages that have been dis uh, disappeared, the 750,000 people forcibly, ethnically cleansed out of Palestine, did not exist. Can I get David just to comment on that? A comment on yes. That? Uh, I there are so many falsehoods in what Tariq has just said, it's hard to know where to begin. Like? But let me ask you one question, Tariq. Do you recognize the right of the Jewish people to self-determination in their historical homeland? I recognize the right of the Palestinian people to, to self-determination in their historical homeland. Do you recognize the right of my people, the Jewish people, to self-determination in their historical homeland, yes or no? I support the concept of self-determination for cultures, for nationalities, within where they live, wherever they live. It is not a question of going into somebody else's land, throwing out those people in that land. You cannot deny... I'm but sorry, the, you, you haven't answered my can question. Can I repeat? I'm answering the question because the issue here is there is no historical land for any people so they can go back 2,000, 3,000. If we go back 3,000 years ago, that was the historical land of the Canaanites. The Canaanites now, they, they were the dependents, actually probably are the most live in Lebanon, but they're not going, they're not going back and saying, oh, but we live there. That was our historical land. You know, this, this country, Britain, was a historical land of the Celts. Can you see the Irish and the Welsh saying, oh, all the Norman descendants, Sorry, all the other people? I'm going to have to stop you there. We're going to have yes. to wrap and to move on to the okay. next question. But thank you both for your questions. Our answer, sorry. <laughs> uh, but now we have to move on. Our second question is, every year the number of Palestinian deaths are on the rise at the hands of Israeli armed forces. From the 30th of March, some 2,771 people were reported injured, including 1,359 by live ammunition, with 130 people in critical condition. And this is according to the Ministry of Health in Gaza. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has expressed his profound alarm at the sharp escalation of violence and the high number of Palestinians killed and injured in the Gaza protests. Are these deaths really to protect Israelis, or is the Palestinian authorities exaggerating these figures? Uh, Tark. Well, I mean, the figures are not exaggerated. They're actually, um, they're actually done from independent people um, reporting from the area, from the medical. And it's not just the Ministry of, 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 of uh, Gaza that, that, that gives these figures. And often these figures actually come from people like the Medical Air of Palestine, it's an independent uh, charity, and, and, and many journalists uh, who, who are in the area. I think the most important thing here is, is to consider what is happening. Throughout, throughout history, but also uh, under international law, people under occupation, people who have been uh, uh, ethnic cleansed, have a right, a legal right, to defend themselves, to, to, to protest. Uh, and everybody should have the right to protest peacefully. Now, um, we take these recent situations in, 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 in Gaza. Um, uh, we had 60 people that just recently killed and over 2,000 people, possibly 3,000 people according to some numbers, uh, have been injured, many critical. And uh, this, these are not people who were... Who so you were, don't think these protesters posed at any threat to Israeli life at all? No, they did not pose threats. I or mean, assets even. I mean, of course you can, you can always find individuals and, and certain, certain numbers. I mean, one thing about the recent protests, there, there is actually a lie that Hamas... Uh, actually orchestrated these these uh, these uh, protests. Hamas actually have got onto the bandwagon, but actually in, in, in Palestine, what people don't realize in Palestine is that Hamas and Fatah and these people don't have as much control over the people. There's things that are called people committees. Uh, we know this from, from facts, from, from actually from on, on the ground, what people say. The first protests uh, at the fence were not done by, by Hamas, they were done by other people uh, getting together and saying we've had enough. Okay. You've got to understand the, people, the misery and the conditions people live in Gaza. When they've said they've had enough, they, they, they will take action, they will do things to Thanks protest. Thanks very much, sir. David, do you respond? Now, nothing happens in Gaza without Hamas approval. Hamas is, well, an, is, a, is an authoritarian, Islamofascist, terrorist organization that rules the strip of Gaza with an iron fist. Nothing can ever happen in that territory without their approval. But back Let's to the question, do that. you sure. think though then Israeli were targeting Hamas members then in these protests? Or First of all, they weren't okay. protests, let me correct okay. you. These, these were not protests. This, is a, this idea that they were <laughs> protests or demonstrations is absurd. Let's be clear what they were. They were an attempt by Hamas to breach the border fence between 
Gaza and Israel. That's not my view, that's the Hamas view. They're quite open, their spokespeople have been quite publicly open about this. The intention was to breach the barrier, to send tens of thousands of Palestinians, civilians initially, as human shields, that would then be followed by armed Hamas terrorists who would then make a dash to the nearest Israeli civilian centres, which let me remind everybody, in case you don't know, some of these are around one kilometre or about a five-minute dash from the border. Not only that, not only was the purpose to breach the barrier and cause this invasion, it was an attempted invasion, it wasn't a protest. To the homeland. But the Hamas leadership, and again, this was made quite public, made it quite clear what the intention was. Let me quote what the leader, one of the prominent leaders of Hamas said just the other day. Our intention is to break down the border, enter into Israel, find Israelis, and we will tear their hearts out from their bodies. That's what he said. You can shake your head, Tariq. That's what he said. Now, you may say, How many oh, people that's just... Shot? That's How many just people shot? You may say that's just rhetoric. We can ignore that. Well, let me assure you, the Israelis are not going to assume that's just rhetoric because Hamas have killed and injured thousands David, of Israelis. I'm going Israelis. to give Tarek just, a, you have just one minute to respond. On well, part. OK, I mean, the, the idea that Hamas have killed thousands of Israelis, I'd like to know what, what these people are because in the, in the struggles in Palestine, I mean, I'm not a supporter of Hamas. And I'll agree, they, there's lots of political issues about Hamas. However, that is not the situation. The situation you have is the Gaza is a the largest outdoor prison in the world. You've got to consider that they're, they're, they're not allowed to fish they're not in their waters, they're not allowed to go out without permission. They can, they, people die looking for medical treatment trying to come out and because they're not allowed in. This is an atrocious situation. Now, to say that people can't protest, to say when people do protest, oh, it's not protest, this is okay for us to shoot them. It's a tantamount to fascism. And i tell you why it's a tantamount to fascism, because it gives a right to someone to say, if some people say, I don't like this, I want, to, I want to say, I don't want to be in this prison anymore. And you've got to remember, these are people who are refugees who were ethnically cleansed from their countries. Now, I have no... On no that point, we're going to move on to the next The people there who were question. shot were, not, were, were, Sorry, were civilians. We're going to move on to Children. But thank you both. A lot of children. Not it's true. true. Guys, not true. Baby thank you very shot. much. Finally, the last question I want to present to you both is, the United Nations have officially declared settlements in the Palestinian territories illegal. Why do the Israeli authorities protect the occupants of more and more settlements despite knowing that they are illegal? David. Well, first of all, this issue of the legality or otherwise of the settlements is something that the UN itself has been inconsistent about over the years. The settlements themselves are a matter for legal dispute. There are legal authorities on both sides of the argument. It, incidentally, it's worth stating that simply because the UN makes a pronouncement about the settlements does not have the status of international law. International law is not set by a pronouncement of the UN General Assembly or the Security Council. What about the Geneva Convention? I'm glad you raised that, Tariq, because this is what people say, that the settlements are in violation of the Geneva Convention, which was incidentally established in the wake of the Second World War, in order to prevent the atrocities that the Nazis committed against the exactly. Jewish people. And that use of the G Geneva Convention to turn it around as a weapon to use against Israel is actually a form of well, Holocaust Geneva, inversion. The Geneva oh, Convention was not that is put in place just to it protect is, the Jewish people. Statement. It was put into place to protect any minority in, group. Being so, let, so, let me so I don't think you can say it's been perpetrated it's against them. Right. It's not being flipped in their head against them. That's but the, I do agree with you on the point of the ambiguity of the legality with, you know, with the UN. Let me, ex let me explain what the, UN, the Geneva Convention states in order for a settlement to be illegal. Okay. There are three criteria are required to be fulfilled. One is the settlers should be forcibly transferred from their residence of origin into their new place of residence their place of residence. That hasn't happened. Has Every single Israeli settler is there voluntarily. There, is not, there has never been a compulsory transfer of population between Israel and any other neighboring country. This is George Orwell's secondly, speak. secondly let, me, let me finish, please. Secondly, for a settlement to be illegal, there has to be a transfer of population across an international border. There is no international border between 
Israel and the West Bank. There never has been. There was an armistice line in 1949. There was no international border. And thirdly, the settlers have to be placed in the sovereign territory of another country. There was never sovereignty in the West Bank. There is a vacuum of sovereignty. Further than that, those who argue that the settlements are not illegal, and I'm not, I'm not an advocate of widespread Jewish settlement. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, I think politically, there's a real debate to be had about this. But if you're going to use the law, you have to be very specific about what law is being Thank broken. Much, and David. the law is not being broken. Okay. Thank that you. is the I'll reality. Like to give you time to respond here. Right. I mean, the whole issue is this. Um, George Orwell in 1984 wrote about doublespeak. And this is a very classic example. You know, the settlers, in, in, let's, let's get one thing right. Yes, you can say the people who went into, into, into the West Bank were, were, went there voluntarily. But who's putting the money up? Who is actually paying and building the houses and putting the money in? It is the Israelis and the Israeli government. It is forcefully removing Palestinians from their homes, the continuation of the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. Now, let's, let's take one thing, thing uh, uh, make something very, very clear. The Palestinians seem to be spoken in this sense as if they have no rights. When we talk about what are borders, which borders exist? Well, they were. In 1948, there was a partition, which is Israelis... Uh, ignored and, 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 and took over. They didn't, they didn't have a war and then withdraw back to, to, the, to the borders which, which the UN had set. They actually went back and kept. And in the time that they were there, they moved forcefully, murdering, murdering over 13,000 Palestinians and forcefully moving, as in Haifa, people at, at gunpoint out of their houses and then occupying their, their houses and taking them. They destroyed 4,000 villages in, in, in uh, Palestine. Uh, and, and, you know, this is ethnic cleansing under highest order. And what's happening in the West Bank today is ethnic cleansing. It is not just a case of building a few settlements. It's a lie that the Israelis continue to pro pro propel the idea that the Palestinians don't exist and they're just going into empty land. This is not true. David, you have 30 seconds to respond to that if you can. The settlements are actually a red herring. A lot of things, there are a lot of things I could say about the settlements, but I don't have time. Okay. Personally, I'm not in favour of settlement expansion, but let's be clear about this. There has not been a single new settlement established anywhere in the West Bank in the last, last 25 years. The settlements occupy less than 2% of the territory of the West Bank. The settlements are not an obstacle to peace. Israel has shown that in the context of a peace agreement, she will remove settlements Thousands of settlers were removed from Egypt in the peace treaty with Egypt. Nearly 10,000 settlers were removed unilaterally from Gaza because Israel was told by the international community, get out of Gaza and there will be peace. Israel got out of Gaza. Did she get peace? No, she got rockets and attack tunnels and now an attempted invasion of her territory by terrorist intent on murdering her much, civilians. Um, now, as promised, we've got some questions from outside the studio for you both. Um, these are going to be very quick, so it's only a minute, uh, minute, minute and a half each. So on the 17th of March, one of Israeli uh, chief uh, rabbis, uh, Yitzhak Yasef, called black people monkeys. The 19th of March, Benjamin uh, Niabu said African refugees are much worse for Israel uh, than the severe attacks by terrorists. Neither comments have been condemned. How would an Israeli advocate defend such sentiments displayed by the Israeli hierarchy? I think that's intended for yourself. I, I heard that comment. It was a repulsive comment. So I you, you yourself now are condemning? Like, well, I condemned yeah, it at from the, time. the start. If anybody yeah. had asked me, if anybody was interested in <laughs> yeah. my opinion, I would have condemned it. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the entire Israeli political establishment condemned it. And whenever a racist comment is made by a senior Israeli figure, whether it's a religious figure or a political figure, you will find there is condemnation across the Israeli political spectrum. In contrast to when Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian leader, talks about Jews contaminating Temple Mount with their filthy feet, which is a disgusting racist comment. Not only is he not condemned, but he's cheered for it. He's cheered on by his supporters and the international community is silent. So there's Thank an enormous did. contrast in our attitude to racist remarks coming from either side of this conflict. Well, thank you very much, David. Um, so I do have, I think, hopefully I have time for to ask yourself a question. This comes from uh, at L Cohen underscore one. Why is Hamas not condemned for its use of civilians' human shields, especially in the recent protests? 
Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, assumptions in that whole question. I mean, one thing is, it's not, you don't have to be a supporter of Hamas um, and, and all their methods, but the point is, the idea that when, when you see thousands of people voluntarily going down and protesting against uh, atrocious conditions in Gaza, uh, you know, you have to people who have been to Gaza understand the situation. There's many people, there's many Jews I know who have been to Gaza and actually understand the situation and why the protest happened. This is not a question of having shields. There's a lot of lies put out about what's going on. Um, yes, Hamas have got things, but one thing that people don't remember, Hamas actually recently, people say, oh, they, they want to get rid of Israel. Actually, they withdrew that out of their, they took that out of their constitution. They have changed their views because people have been talking to them, not, not so much from the Israelis. If we want peace in Israel, if you want peace, you've got to have human rights and you've got to have justice, and you've got to understand the history that the Palestinians have been the mo one of the most, most um, oppressed and victimized people in the world. You know, it, it, it's almost incredible that people still think that, that uh, when somebody is, is, is oppressed or you're come victims and you're pushed away up your land and ethnically cleansed, but somehow you don't have some right to protest, some right to fight back. You do. Israel is one of the most, most, um, most uh, militarized countries in, in the whole world, and yet with the power they have, and they can shoot using not to remember well, they were using ammunition they're using ammunition in gaza to, in, the, in the last few days which is ammunition designed to do maximum damage it's not ammunition you might use which might your, your police might use or anybody else might use just for for control and, and 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 only as a last resort it was the first resort is to shoot people and you consider that children have been killed in this thing and the and the and the fact that children are still imprisoned in, 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 as military prisons from the West Bank and Gaza uh, in, 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 in Palestine, which is illegal. Off, sorry. Um, well, thank you so much for your question, guys. Hopefully you've got things cleared up for you. I'd like to extend a massive applause for our two wonderful guests, David Stone. <laughs> and Tara Khamis. It's been amazing. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we have time for today, unfortunately. Uh, I've been your host, Gabriel McCoy, and this has been The Land of Conflicts. <laughs>